want to welcome everybody to their third episode of the Coaches in the Mouth. We've got uh, Bray Cook or Coach Bray Cook from P Ridge here with us, who's fixing messing with some mics right now. Uh, we've got the mouth Brent Bender. We've got a very very special guest, one of my favorite coaches of all time, uh, three time. SEC champion, three-time SEC Coach of the Year, CBS analyst, Coach Houston Nutt. Coach, it's a great to have you today. We're, we've are we been talking about this for a while, and anytime I get to see you, it's exciting just because you've had a, big, a lot of influence on my coaching career, and, and everybody in the state of Arkansas loves you. little bit so you come back to Arkansas in, in 1990 with, with Jack Crow uh, tell me you know Jack Crow was a really good football coach I mean you know after you know the, he gets criticized for the Citadel game and all that deal and and but you check his career out as he leaves you know great offense of mine went on to lead the NCAA in offense forever you go there and how's that situation and what'd you learn watching how that situation played out um, you're, you're exactly right, Coach, about uh, Jack Crow. Very, very smart and really did a great job with formations, different things on offense. Remember the shootout between Arkansas and Houston back and forth? You know, he was calling those plays, Quinn Groby and Derek Russell, and um, really, really good. Now, remember, this is the transition time. We're getting ready to go into the SEC. That's right. And it's a big jump, man, because remember, we grew up Southwest Conference. Hey, it's Rice, TCU, Houston, get ready for Texas. And all of a sudden, you're thinking, wait a minute, we got to go. We got Alabama, LSU, Georgia, Florida. We're in a whole different world now. And so that was a tough transition. Uh, and what's really tough is you mentioned the Citadel game. Coach Broyles decides to let uh, Coach Crow go after that. And now, boy, your team, you, 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 you're in a tailspin. And Joe Kynes comes in and really does a good job of trying to keep everything balanced. We, we go and win the first game. But there's so many lessons there because, man, I tell you, it's so easy when you think things are going pretty good and, boy, it can fall apart and, you know, so quick. And so in a, in a mind of an 18, 19, 20-year-old, you know, when you lose a coach that you sign for, another one comes in. And then also the outside noise on top oh, of that. Yeah get that outside noise going, that's when you learn you got to be a real coach with some Dr. Phil in there now. And so I learned a lot of uh, tough lessons right there. And then um, Joe Kynes really, I thought he did a good job, but we didn't win that many games. And then Coach Boyles made the decision to hire Danny Ford. And so when Danny Ford came in, I get a call at the last second of one of the uh, – uh, candidates dropped out at Murray State. Scott Edgar at, was an assistant yeah. officer. He was coach at the time, so he actually put my name in over there. And so I go to Coach Frost. I say, Coach, what do you think about me going to interview uh, at uh, Murray State? Oh, I think it'd be wonderful. That'd be a great idea. And also, I think it benefits you to go interview as a head coach. And so I said, okay. I said, well, you think Coach Ford? Oh, he'd be good with it. I go to Coach Ford. He wasn't good with it. He wasn't good with it at all. He said, what? Where's Murray State? I said, it's Western Kentucky, little town. Why do you want to go there? He said, here's what's, the, here's what's important to me. I'm trying to evaluate. You don't, I don't even know if I'm going to hire you. I want to figure out whether or not you can recruit. So if you go interview, you better make sure you get that job or you better stay here and start recruiting. So that was kind of the first time, Jeff, I think, whoa, man. So I go back to Coach Brawls. I said, Coach, I had a really good relationship with Coach. And I said, Coach, uh, that didn't go as well as I thought it was going to go now, like you said, uh, with Coach Ford. What do you mean? He said, I better go get that job if I go get it now. He put a lot of pressure on me. He really discouraged me from going to interviews. Oh, oh he's, he's just trying to put pressure on you to keep recruiting, keep recruiting, but you need to go interview. I said, oh, man. So I, I'm kind of torn in there like I'm not sure, you know. <laughs> so anyway, I go ahead and go. I go interview and uh, come back thinking I'm not going to get the job, and I'm, I'm back recruiting. 
And then all of a sudden I get the calls that, hey, we're going to offer you the job at Murray State. And I said, you're kidding me. No, you're the head coach. Well, that means I got to take a pay cut now from about $50,000. I got to take a pay cut to go to Murray State. And and now all of a sudden, it's, do I really want to be a head coach? You know, so I go to Coach Pro, he has a coach. They offer me the job. Well, you got to decide if you want to be a head coach. I said, well, coach, I guess I should. I mean, I'm not, I'm unsure with Danny Ford right at this time. You know, I don't know him as well. I don't know. So I take the job. And uh, we, we get over there, and, and after the first day, I call Coach Brawls back. Is there any way I can get my job back? He said, what's the problem? I said, Coach, they don't want football here. They, I, I, I just met with the team. Uh, they got a losing streak of about 32. Uh, they've lost 32 games or so and such the last couple of years. I just, I, I don't know. He said, hey, there's a reason why they hire coaches. And usually the reasons are not good. <laughs> so that is why they need a new coach. And so just this is natural. It's a natural thing. Hang in there. You know, so he tried to encourage me, you know, so I'm hanging in there. But, oh, hey, I get in that car and I come to Arkansas. And I go sign William Hampton, uh, Timmy Scarborough, Rule Shepard from Conway. I'm going to all my guys, Coach Smith at Conway. I'm going to Scooter Register. I'm hitting all of Arkansas, getting all these players, Elliot Dunn, Ken Parks at Mills. And I took a boatload, about nine or ten players, just getting in a car. Danny and I get in the car, and we got half our team from Arkansas. And then, long story short, after those first couple of years were rough, boy, playing with freshmen, trying to teach them how to play hard and win, we turned that thing around. Now we go get Mike Cherry. Mike Cherry, I helped recruit from Texas, Canada to Arkansas. He transfers. Derek Colors, we get Reggie Swinton from Little Rock Central, and all of a sudden we're rolling. We're 22 and three the next two years, and that pace of victory after all those long hard time, hard times, man, you're feeling good. And then about that time, Coach, here comes Boise State after two back-to-back championships in the first ever playoff win in Murray State history. Uh, Boise State says we need a, a coach to take us. From one double A to Division One, we're making the transition, and so we go out there those mountains, and that's a long way from home. Boy, that, <laughs> I, I learned real quick, Jeff. You had to go recruit California, Boise, Idaho. Idaho didn't have enough players, so you had to go to California, and that was out of my element, my man. It was you. You had to let USC, UCLA, Washington, Oregon, all those guys come in first, and then you were getting the scraps. You're getting what was left over, and that was a tough way to go. But Boise, we knew this. Boise had a good football base, good fans. They love football. That's until we felt like we won five that first game. We followed Pokey Allen, who had passed. It's a really tough situation. But we knew that there was there was potential there. But then, lo and behold, after 200 days, Frank Rose calls, and we go Back to Arkansas now after 200 days at Boise, Idaho. Well, let me, let me interrupt this because you probably don't know this. Is you know I was coming in as I was working for Coach Rester down in, in uh, El Rada, and I'll never forget the day you got hired in the pride of high school football coaches because they knew you. You know, I remember Coach Rester had his chest out. You know, hired Houston Dale. You know, and just uh the excitement there was of you coming in, not just with the fan base, but the high school football coaches, because you were at Murray, you've recruited them all, you know, Arkansas, when right. you need them, you know, gave those kids a chance, and those high school coaches never forgot that. And right. uh, and I and I remember going to your first clinic, and this is a great story, is, you know, I'm my eyes are wide open, there's a thousand coaches, my real, my first true clinic I've ever been to, and Coach was, you know, great to let us go do things. And I'll never forget you in spring practice, and I'm sitting on the sideline, and there's John Robinson, the head coach at USC for the Los Angeles Rams. He was your feature speaker, and I didn't know either to, to speak to him or stand by him or do what. And we got to, you know, and I'm sitting there thinking, and I got to meet him, and I thought, that's about John Robinson. You know, that just, just was the neat, neatest thing, but – but I didn't want to interrupt you, but that no. time period, you, you coming in with high school coaches were, yeah. I mean, the pride they had in it. Well, 
Jeff, you bring up such a good point because, you know, my father was a high school coach and he always took me that Spalding. Remember the Spalding barbecue? Oh, yeah. Remember the Spalding barbecue? So I grew up with the Spalding barbecue, Ronnie Ropes and all the guys. And, and so that connection that you're talking about was free. And they knew that, hey, I love those high school coaches. I love what they did, what they stood for. And there's an immediate connection. And from Bernie Cox, my coach, to Joe Frey, all these guys, uh, they were just so good to me. And we were good to them, and, and we just had this bond, you know. And so that made the transition, made it so much easier because the one thing we understood is Arkansas football. Oh, yes. We understood that. Mm-hmm. And I, we believe we believed it. Where a lot of coaches from the outside – you know, it's easy. Hey, let's go get a three star from Texas. It'd be a whole lot better because when they're not, we'll get a two star from Arkansas or three. So we'll get a whole lot better from Texas. Ah, uh, be careful. Be careful right there with those words because I can tell you a lot. Give you a list of names from Bo Lacey, Jeremiah Harper. I can go down the list of how many players that probably didn't have a four star beside their name. But I tell you what, that heart and pride that you're talking about, Coach was something special and it, it motivated the four and five stars from texas and georgia it motivated them how they played for the holes well you give example like zach painter you know you, you come in there and he's kind of had great athlete from jonesboro up and down career y'all come in coach burns comes in puts him an outside linebacker and the guy's just phenomenal which i mean you had a lot of great players but yeah. that tie there you you could tell you know, and they played right. hard. And one thing, teams, uh, me and Bray and Brent always talk. Whenever your name comes up about Arkansas football, first thing is how hard your teams played. I mean, every every Saturday, you know, scoreboard might not worked out, but it wasn't from lack of effort. And obviously, the great overtime games and you know the accomplishments that you had there. You know, with you know going to the SEC championships, just a consistent basis, and the the players y'all recruited and the you, you know, Coach Markison, who's a longtime assistant for you, give that guy three scholarship guys and two walk-ons, he'll rush for 250 yards. I mean, that's the way it always worked and everything. And yeah, right, uh, right. so, you know, what a great career at Arkansas. And you, you transitioned to Ole Miss. It had a good run there. Talk to you, you know, about the transition from Arkansas, which, you know, that's a difficult time. And you know, a lot of people that were, you know, loyal to you and it was – Hard to see you go, but everybody understood it too. You know, coaching's timing. You know, it, it was it was probably the toughest time ever because we had such good teams. Two thousand six, two thousand seven were really the Darren McFadden, Felix Jones, Jonathan Louise. I can go on and on and all these players. I don't want to leave anybody out, but they were so good and so committed. But boy, there was a very very tough, difficult time. And boy, I tell you, when you leave. When you leave a place after 10 years that you grew up in, you played for assistant head coach, it's tough. So we, we had three places to go when, when we, we decided to leave, and we chose Ole Miss. I, I playing against Ole Miss, of course, I love the SEC, but I knew they had athletes. I get to, to get to Ole Miss, it's very similar to 98. Michael Orr, Jamarco Sanford, uh, Jevin Sneed, these guys have not been to a bowl game. And they were really down, really down, three and nine, three and nine, and it really struggled. And um, we gave them, a, a, you know, some injection of confidence, do right attitude, and all this stuff. And boy, it it, it was two back to back cotton bows that were really good. But I also learned I had the best athletic director. Then I went to really one of the worst. I had a bad. I had a. It was a. It wasn't. It wasn't good. And. The, uh, the buildings, when you look at the buildings, the vision that Coach Brawls had, it's unbelievable. It is. It, it, it's just phenomenal. And then you go there, you don't put back the money into the, the meeting rooms and the, all the things that you really need, the weight room, and it, and it really hurts you. But anyway, we had two great years. But I tell you what's the toughest thing, though, Jeff, and I, and I talked to Brent about this a lot. Uh, that week, Danny Nutt, Mike Marcus, all my guys tied into Arkansas. It was one of the toughest times. We're we're gonna go back to Fayetteville to play Fayetteville our first year. We couldn't sleep the whole week. I mean, those are the players we recruited, and we knew them. And 
what was so difficult, Jeff, is going into that visitor's locker room. And when we get there, it's like, whoa, this is, this is, I mean, it was like, this is, doesn't seem right. We're in the visitor's locker room. And it was just, it was such a tough emotional game. And then coming out, uh, I never will forget, we're on, I don't, I can't remember which TV game it was, but they said, hey, coach, time to take the team on. I said, well, I'm not going to do it right now. Coach, time to take your team right now. I said, I know they're getting ready to call these hogs, you know, and I, I'm going to wait on this. I'm going to wait to the, to, to, I, I didn't tell them, but I was going to wait till the Arkansas came out. We I came out that. the same time. And so we, I, I, I didn't want our guys just to get, because I, I warned them, I said, you're going to a hostile environment, <laughs> and you can multiply it about 10 times. Baby. You're not going to be able to hear a thing. And from the time you come out of that dress room, you're going to be booed like you've never been booed before. And so I tried to have them prep. And so it hit me all of a sudden out there. I said, don't go out there first. Let's just wait. And so we came out at the same time, and so that helps a little bit. But once the game got going, you know, you just get locked into the game. But, boy, that was tough. And we won the first two years. And then, then the last two years, you know, those were two good – Ed Orgeron left me two good classes. But he also left me two bad classes. And that's what I was trying to explain to the AD is, hey, look, got two good classes, didn't know how to win. We got to put shovels in the ring, got to get building to building this thing because people are fired up about our team. But we're going to be playing with freshmen my third and fourth year. And then Jevin Steed, you know, he decides to leave early. That hurts. And so you're playing with freshmen, and it's a, it's a tough deal. But, um, you know, that's the first time I got fired at the end of that deal. That's, that was a rough, rough time. But um, the thing you miss the most, Jeff, as you know, is just the relationships and getting in that uh, team together, building that team. And when you can say, hey, we did it in a celebrated locker room, there's nothing like it. Uh, there, there's no doubt. And, and uh, I mean, then you obviously go on to CBS, you you know, one of the faces of college football on there. Coach, we're going to turn it here a little bit, and let's get talking some ball a little bit. Uh, uh, Brent's going to talk to you a little bit about, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about SEC play. And Brent, take off with, he's been waiting to talk to you for, Two weeks. Oh Here man, we uh, glad to, glad to see you, Coach. We talk on the phone all the time, but don't we don't do FaceTime. We just do. Uh, <laughs> I want to start out talking about uh, your top five quarterbacks this year in the in the SEC. Uh, yeah. Well, let's hear what. Yeah. We're- Brent, where you always go back to experience. The one thing Arkansas has is when you have a quarterback, make sure Coach Coach Pittman will sleep much easier when you have an experienced quarterback. You start with K.J. Jefferson, you know, a big guy that can throw the ball very, very well. And I tell you what, we've seen it. You better wrap him up. You've seen the last couple of years, you can't just tackle this guy with one arm. You think you're going to just kind of go nonchalantly and just try to drag him down. It's not going to happen. This guy can make a bunch of yards running the football, too. So, uh, I think he's going to be really good. And uh, he's been consistent. And he can throw every ball from the deep ball, intermediate, uh, even the touch ball. So, I, I think he's going to be good. Uh, Jaden Daniels is another guy, Brent, from uh, LSU. He's not as big as like a KJ. doesn't have that frame. But I tell you what he, he has is, is wheels. He has legs. He can run. And when you can mix in a quarterback that can run, with some option, as y'all know, guys, it, it gives the defense coordinators that drives them crazy. And so Jaden Daniels, when you watch him throw the ball, he throws the ball extremely well. Uh, I think I think um, that guy with the supporting cast, if he has a good a good running game and a good running backs, get him some receivers. And it seems like LSU always has good receivers. But Jaden Daniels is a guy that can extend the play. I think he's really good. Um, other guy I'd look at is you know Will Rogers. It's gonna be interesting, guys. It's really sad what happened to uh, Coach Leach, uh, the passing of Coach Leach. And what I'm looking for there is will 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 Rogers be the same quarterback? You know they had the air raid. I just gotta believe the whispering of uh, Mike Leach is special, man. So I, I I'm I'm really curious how that will turn out. Yeah. Um, the other one, you know, you go to. Uh, you go to uh, Texas A&M, uh, 
what's that, Connor Weigman? You know, he's yeah. a physical. I'm, I may see what Bobby Petrino does with him. Uh, you know, he shows flashes of a good arm and a good athlete. And, and But see, this is where you, that's why I've named experience first. Because coaches feel so good about co- the players that's been there. Well, now we don't. Now there's a little bit of a drop off. Now let's go to Devin Leary. Leary is a guy that's had some experience. The transfer portal plays in effect here for Kentucky, and then you get an offensive coordinator coming back from the pros. That the last time he was there, Cohen Lamb Cohen, this guy was up and down the field. Now, if y'all recall, oh, yeah, for yeah. Kentucky. so that will be one to watch. Devin Leary, how he transferred in from North Carolina State. So I've kind of got my eye on those those kind of things there, Brent. Um back to if we, if we can go back to K, KJ for a second. Are you are you there? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Jeff and I were at this at the spring game uh and we saw and uh, we watched him. Um he looked like a totally different quarterback. Looked like he had lost about twenty five pounds. Uh, look like, and I talked to people about it, and they said, KJ wants to be coached. And it looked like he was more mechanically sound as a quarterback than he was under uh, under Coach Browles. I don't mean that as a slight towards uh, Kendall Browles at all. But but I just think with Dan Enos coming in, uh, he shaped KJ into a uh, quarterback that uh, I'm looking forward for great things for as a Razorback fan. And he's going to be my vote for starting out the season. He's going to be my front runner for SEC first team quarter, all SEC first team quarterback. Well, and one thing is this coaching. I know this is a simple thing and you get it because things like this, I learned from you a little bit is, you know, Dan likes to get underneath center. And, you know, they've been, uh, let's well, probably 99% in, in shotgun the whole, whole time as a coach, you know, you're, you're talking about, a you know, the guy that's been around a while, KJ getting him. And I'm sure he's, you know, through his career, he's taking snaps underneath center. What adjustment is that? You know, cause Dan's got, you know, play action, you know, hide the ball, you know, that kind of deal. And they're still going to get in the gun and pistol and all right. that stuff. How how do they juggle that? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I tell you what, I've, I've always been, of course, a big fan of of, of getting under the center. And then, I, but I do believe you got to have both. But there's something about that CQ. And my, uh, Brent will tell you from his daddy, uh, first words probably he, already, he whispered at an early age was, we got to have some CQ, center quarterback exchange. And, you know, it's funny because I've been to camps before now, Jeff. I've been to camps. And this uh, recent is, is, is last year is when a lot of these quarterbacks have never, ever put their hands under a center and you actually had to teach them, oh, no, this is how you take a snap from the center because they've always been in gun. And so you just can't assume that, okay, we let's get on the center. No, you got to practice it. Right. And everybody's got to be, you know, in tune. The center quarterback, well, that's so important, that exchange. And as you know, we've seen a bunch of – there's been some times that ball hits that ground, man. It's not a worse feeling in the world when you turn it over. So th- there is some there is some time right there. But I think it helps everything, though. It helps on short yardage. It helps on especially inches. It always used to always bother me when it's fourth and an inch and you're back five and a oh, half yard, man. six yard. You know, it's just different, uh, you know, a different time of, type of ball. But I think when you do both, and I see a lot of pros that do both. And so I, I think, well, I think if you're going to go the next level, you're going to have to be able to do both. I mean, yeah. they, they've adjusted in the pros. You know, they've taken the college game. But, you know, yep. at the end of the day, if it is, this always bothered me as coaches, you know, quarterback sneaks – in a ball game, you call that's probably the most important call of the game. And, yes. and I'll always go into your practice. First thing y'all do is QC. I mean, you're out there pre-practicing, getting it and, uh, you know, not practicing that and then throwing them in a fourth and go balls popping up everywhere. Just getting underneath center, just practicing it and that part of it. Well, coach, I'm going to turn it over to coach cookies. Got a couple question for you. 
about assistant coaches in the in the SEC. You know, always looking for those new guys and what who's kind of the MVP. And this doesn't have to be a coordinator. You know, it might be an offensive line coach. But uh, go ahead, Bray. Hey, Coacher, uh, Bray Cook here. Uh, huge fan. Grew up watching you. Uh, that 07 game against LSU is uh, one of the the reasons that I decided to really lock in and and try and play college football. So. Uh, it's cool to sit here and, and have a conversation with you. So, uh, but the question you know, we were talking about yet, yeah, obviously there's some great coaches in the SEC um, all over, right? It, it's stacked right now. Who who are your top five assistant coaches? Who who are the top five guys that you think are going to make the biggest difference on the field uh, this year? Let, let's narrow that down. Make it even a little tougher on you, coach. Is give us so he gave us five. Give us the top three on offense, and give us the top three on defense. To make it look, we're trying to make you earn your pay around here. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, brother. Okay, let's go. Let's go defense first. Let's go defense first. Um, you know the when I watch when I watch Georgia. When you go to Georgia, let's say before the year, I'm thinking, okay, they lost seven, eight, nine draft choices. I'm thinking that's going to be a drop off. And when you look at the way they played. It's just amazing how they they have uh, done a great job of evaluation, reloaded, because that's one of the best defenses in the country to go win the national championship. And so Schumann and Will Muschamp, remember now, Will Muschamp has been a head coach. And I think he's better fitted. Uh, uh, He's been under Saban. They all, because Kirby, they all been under that tree. And when you watch these defenses play, man, they, they, they run to the ball and they take great angles. And they arrive in a bad mood, man. And they're fun to watch. And so the consistency, the consistency from Kirby Smart uh, to Schumann to Will Muschamp, those, those guys, that brain power there, the way they they reload and just do it consistently, Georgia's going to be there, be around, guys. And so I had to start with them. And then, of course, you know, it's it's unusual not to start with Coach Saban, uh, but it seems like Coach Saban. Uh, as long as he's at the top, it doesn't matter. He has so many assistants that roll in, roll in. This is Kevin Steele, guys. This is his fifth time to be at Alabama. Kevin Steele and I, Jeff, I don't know if you and Bray know this. Kevin Steele and I, we first got hired by Pat Jones together in 1984. I think he so was Lewis Campbell. I think, Coach, I think he was Lewis Campbell's GA at one time, yeah. too. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. And so – uh, Kevin Steele has been around the block. He's been in a lot of places and he's done a good job and he's learned. He's got a lot of experience, a lot of laps around the track. So that's, that's going to be interesting. You know, the one, the one guy to me, I think we ought to keep watching is he's done a good job. I always like to look at, you know, how they get better from the start to finish. And Matt house is a guy that he was a Bulls award finalist. If you look at Matt house from LSU, you know, he took over a team was like 74th on defense, and all of a sudden you look up and they're like 30th or something, 31, 30, something like that. But it's the consistency, you know, of getting better uh, by the time you hit November. One thing you start in September, but as you see the improvement, the way they tackle, the way they get to the ball, man, you, you just, to me, it's coaching. The other one that's 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 been under statement is that Ole Miss, you not you don't hear as much about it, but Golden – uh, right. what's his first uh, he, he's, he's, he's another guy. If you look at his track record, they've gotten better and better. Uh, uh, you know, Stoops of Kentucky, you know, you look at these guys that, that have had the background and the influences. And to me, it rubs off on how they play. And this is a really a two chin strap league. And it's, it's, it's a toughness, you know, and you look at today's world uh, of the fast break and look at the ones that still tackle. You know, when you go mm-hmm. to practice, there's a lot of times I never see a middle drill guys and you got all you guys in there have been around middle drills all your life. Well, when you go to practice nowadays, very rarely, but I tell you what, at Georgia, they do, uh, Alabama does. And so I think there's got to come a time where you have to tackle. And I'm talking about live before you say, okay, Saturday, it's time to tackle guys. And I just, I just don't think you could do that. Um, offensively, in this league, offensively, 
Uh, now this this game, it used to be we could score. And guys, let's just get to twenty four points and play defense and special teams. Remember, remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I love those days. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a little bit different now. I'm going to start with Tennessee. You know, Josh Heupel, and I'm sure he has a really good offensive coordinator. But Josh Heupel's fingerprints are all on this. I watched the UCF uh, time, and I watched what he did with Hendon Hooker. Remember, now Hendon Hooker was at Virginia Tech. You didn't hear much about Hendon Hooker at Virginia Tech. But I tell you what, you sure heard about him at, at Tennessee. And if you look at the motions and the, the the formations and the movement and how he got people spaced and one-on-one with Jalen Hyatt, Tillman, it, it's remarkable the job he did. The, to go up and down the field on Alabama uh, was unbelievable. It was just unbelievable. So I got to give him so much credit. Mike Bobo is a guy that's been around. Remember, he coached Aaron Murray. He coached David Green. And so, to me, Todd Munkin did such a great job. But Kirby had Mike Bobo in there as a, as a GA, uh, as an analyst. And to me, he goes right back in. It's not going to miss much. Now, what what is what you are going to miss is a guy like Stetson Bennett. And, you know, everybody's always trying to replace him because he's one of the 5'10", but all he did was win, exactly. and he distributed the ball the right way. But Mike Bobo was that kind of coach. If you go back and look how he coached Aaron Murray, David Green, all the all the people that he had, the track record, it's really good. Uh, the the one that we're that we're that we're going to keep our eyes on, of course, is Texas A and M. Brent and I, Brent and I have talked about this. We all know Bobby Petrino can call plays. There's no question about it. And so I'm really curious, guys, to see how this works, because here's the thing. Jimbo Fisher likes to call plays. He sure does. He likes to coach quarterbacks, too. (laughs) And so so how is this going to work? The one thing we know is, as far as chemistry and all that, uh, that, that that would be one question for me. How's all this going to work? Because can Bobby Petrino handle if Jimbo Fisher, since he is the head coach, says, hey, I want to keep my two plays in my playbook of this one, this one, and this one. And I want you to teach it. Now, can Bobby handle that? Because it's going to be a time. It's hard for a play caller to all of a sudden, okay, you got it. It's hard for him to to let go. So I'm, I'm really curious to see how all that works out and how they put it together. Texas A&M, they got athletes. But I'm going to tell you, there's some people down there, they're expecting to win. I, I live around here, McKinney, with the A&M boosters, and they're not happy. And they're paying that guy a lot, a lot of money, guys, and they want to win. And so I'm real curious to see because there is a there's two good quarterback coaches, two good play callers, but now you got to get it together. You got to really be because one thing about 18, 19, 20 year olds, you can't fool them. They know when yeah. mom and daddy fighting, and they know when things aren't aren't right, and aren't together. And so it's got to be together, man. To, 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 it takes all eleven on the same page. I'm gonna ask. Bray, this is, and you played for Coach Petrino. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And you, I mean, you, I've been to a lot of practices. You know how all that works. And I, I'm a coach. And I think he's one of the best play callers I've ever been around. One of the greatest offensive minds. How do you think he's going to fit in that with, uh, you know, being well, the offense coordinator? Because you know, Jimbo's just as aggressive as he is. Any coach. I mean, you know. In that part, I mean, you played yeah. for Coach Petrino. Uh, to me, you know, it's one of those things that you know if if you buy into his game plan and kind of what they're doing, you're going to win some ball games. Uh, so, you know, I don't know what the culture is like in that locker room. I know they've got a lot of talent, um, but it's going to come down to uh, obviously, yeah, the dynamics between Jimbo and Bobby, but also those players buying into um, the scheme, the game, the game plan, the X's and O's because. Sometimes, you know, if there is that tension on the coaching staff, obviously the players see it. Um, are they going to be able to get through that and just say, hey, let's go win some ball games? Because if we do this, you know, it's going to work. And, and that's, that's what I think is going to happen. I think it's going to be a big culture shock to those kids to buy in. Yeah. I mean, when you – with him and, you, you know, he calls a play and you're, he's going to tell you you're wide open and you're wide open as a player – the more that happens, the more you buy into things. Mm-hmm. And so I'm with you, Coach. It is I mean, that's going to be fun to watch. I mean, it, I mean it's going to be fun to watch. And, and they're being able to score points. And like you said, there is pressure there. And you live around it. I got friends down there in Dallas and, and uh, 
one big A and M fan, and and I mean it's and you you nailed it. They're not wanting to win week six. Or, yeah, they're wanting to win today, and it right right, right, now, right now. Oh, let's turn let's turn into this. Let's let's go and hit the SEC West and and and. Where you think Arkansas falls there? Uh, you know, I'm. I, t- I tell you, one I'm interested to see is Brian Kelly at LSU. You know, I, I. You know, I think he's a really good football coach, and uh, the way that started and you know finished pretty good. You know, Alabama sitting there. Hey, they don't have a proven quarterback. You know, Ole Miss. All you know, Mississippi State with a new head coach. What do you see the SEC West playing out? And you know, and, and talk a little bit about Arkansas. You know, I want to go back with what you said about Coach Kelly. You know, I'm with you. I think he's a real good coach. I didn't know Coach Kelly. I watched him from afar. But I can't remember the first big game they had on TV and they got beat. I can't remember if it's Florida State or it's Florida somebody. State. somebody. Mike, Mike Florida State. Yeah, okay. It's Florida State. Mike Norville okay. Labor Day. Okay. Let, let's look at this, guys. When you get beat in Baton Rouge on national TV, Florida State, those fans walking out of there, because I've witnessed them, they, they don't feel good. They ain't feeling good. Now, they've had a lot of uh, etouffee and some beans and rice and some nice drinks all mm-hmm. day long. Mm-hmm. And they ain't good, okay? And there was some outside noise there early, like. I, I think they, know. Coach, I think they beat them in New Orleans, if I'm not mistaken. And I, it might have been, it's kind of a preseason game. I've been at Atlanta. Oh, okay, okay, sure. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. They, they had two or three games like that where they, he got beat in New Orleans, and then he got beat at home and by somebody. But my point is, he came back each time. Each time he came back and got better. And if you watch his teams, his teams got coached better and better by October, by November. And all of a sudden, you look up, Jaden Daniels, he's more comfortable. Defense is playing better. I mean, so I'm with you on that one. I, I really think uh, – they, 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 they can be really good. I think they're well coached. Uh, when you look at the West, to me, you, you start with you start with that quarterback of who, who's coming back with experience. So, to me, that's what gives Arkansas a chance. you got K.J. Jefferson who's been there. He's got experience. He, he, and like Brent said, he's in shape. He's lost some weight. So, he's tuned in. And so, now I'm looking for this. Offensive line, defensive line. I always like to start with in the trenches. How's the offensive line? The offensive line has got to be physical. You got to be tough. And on the defensive side of it, you need one rusher that can really create pressure. And I'm not saying you got to have a, a you know three or four of them, but you got to have at least one on that edge that they got to know he's coming. And then you got to be able to stop the run. And when you stop the run and get the ball back to the offense with a good old line. And then now the skill set, I'm hearing, you know, good. The thing about today's world is you don't get to see a spring game and see all the players. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, I, I spoke to uh, Rhett Lashley's group at SMU, former player of mine, uh, last year, and he said he had 27 newcomers in in July, and nine, of, nine to 11 of them will be starters on both sides. And I'm thinking, well, you didn't even have a spring ball with him. So he starts in August. And so – I don't even know all the names yet at Arkansas. You know, I'm just now starting to get into it. But it's amazing with the transfer. Because I've heard that Coach Pittman's done a good job with getting some transfers in on defense. And you got to have it. you got to have cover corners. you got to have a backer. And you got to have an edge rusher. And all those pieces are so important. So I, I'm anxious to see how, how Arkansas puts it all together. Because I think they got a, they got enough to start with K.J. Jefferson. And then, um, you know, you, you always look at Alabama, but this is the first time Alabama, you know, they've had, let's think about it now, they've had two Tunga by Loa, they've had Matt Jones, Jalen Hurts, and then Bryce Young. I mean, he's had a, a, a number one pick for the last, what, five or six years, seven years. So now all of a sudden we don't know. We know Jalen Milrow. He's an athletic guy, but with question, question a little bit is throwing. Uh, Ty said the guy behind him, you know, there are people talking about him. So there's still some unanswered questions there for Alabama at quarterback for the first time probably in a long time. Don't know. So it, it, it's going to be interesting because it's just a, that, that Western side is so physical and uh, so tough. 
And then, of course, you throw in the Ole Miss Mississippi State. And then, the, like we talked about, the Will Rogers, will he be the same? And now Lane Kiffin has about four or five quarterbacks in the locker room. Mm -hmm. One of them transferred from Oklahoma State. I don't know how they are all going to be happy. Look for one of them to transfer before two of these. Yep. You know, it's, just, it's, just a, it's just a tough deal. Well, let's, let's move over to the east. I mean, everything rolls through Georgia, obviously. Uh, you know, you see Tennessee, you know, had a great year last year. You know, could Florida get it together? They, You know, they've had players. They've struggled. I mean, you know, besides when, you know, Steve Spurrier, Urban Meyer period, they've been up and down. I mean, uh, what's, what's the East look look like to you? You know, Stoops and them do a great job. I think he does one of the best jobs in, in the country. He really does. He's un does a great hockey. He really does. That's, that's a physical football team, really good. Um, you know, it, it, as you said, it goes through Georgia. There's no question about that. I've never seen a team – Right now, that will reload, and even though they lose draft picks, they're there, man. They are running to the ball, and, and they're tough. Now, I will I will be curious to see who takes over off, uh, as quarterback uh, when they've had a guy pretty steady there for the last couple of years. That, that'll be interesting. But, um, yeah, it goes through Georgia. The thing, the thing about, um, you know, there's a time that the few years past, Florida, Tennessee was so down. And it was, it was just really Georgia on that side. But now I, I see Tennessee making a move. Again, it comes back, who's that quarterback? Who's going to be their quarterback? And uh, after Hendon Hooker had such a great year until he got hurt. So uh, Tennessee's improved. I see they buying in. You know, Brady this is something I think is so important about the players in that locker room buying in. I see a team that's really bought into Coach Heupel. And so Tennessee, to me, is really taking steps forward compared to where they've been. And um, they really stepped up. So I'm anxious to see if they can maintain it. Florida's the one that surprised me. Florida's the team that I, I always expect them to be there towards yeah. the top uh, because the recruiting is so fertile. When you look at the recruiting grounds, start with Georgia, that, all they have to do is go in their backyard. And it makes it easy. Well, Florida's the same way. Florida has enough there in their state that they, you know, if they pick the right ones, do the right evaluate, they should be there. And it's just like this quarterback that gets drafted in the first round. My gosh, guys, he won. I don't know how many games he won. Not too many. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, he's first round pick. You know, he's six foot four. He's two twenty five. Runs four five. What a four four. Whatever. And and then, but to me, that's got to be frustrating. And in, in when you're not winning nine or ten or getting in that championship game. Um, when you're Florida. So I, I, I work with Kevin Carter, uh, oh, the yeah. defensive line, all American. And he talks about it all the time. You well, know, I, I, well, I'll to, and, 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 and me and Brent and Bray, what we talk about, you think about it too. You obviously talking about it on the show is, you know, Spurrier had his run, came in, you know, had great players, blah, 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 you know, doing, doing something different. Then urban came in, you know, had great players, you know, and they've had good, you know, Charlie Strong's a great coach. I mean, they've had great coaches, you talked about Kevin Carter. You can't put your finger on what the deal is there. You know, I mean, just what's your take on that? Well, there's got to be a, a disconnect. And again, I'm going to go back to what Grace I'm really big, Coach, on, on, on locker rooms, on togetherness, on that buy in of one heartbeat. And it doesn't take but two or three players to get in a corner and start, I confess it's your fault. Coach don't know what he's doing. I don't like what he, he should be starting. This. You start getting those kind of things going. And there's got to be a disconnect somewhere because uh, it, it's just it's, – it's too good a place. It's too good a place. So, again, you know, we all have injuries. If you have injuries, I understand that. But you just don't know. It's like you said, you can't put your finger on it. But uh, when you see athletes out there, you know, you expect. You expect big things to happen, you know, at Florida. Well, well, that's true. We're going to turn it, turn it, kind of go a different route. I mean, you've talked on the phone a little bit about this, and 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 Brave. We had Casey, your former quarterback, on uh, yesterday. Casey Dick did a wonderful job, and they're in here. You know, these guys are talking about NIL, and I went to Henderson State. We were just happy to give us a sausage biscuit in the morning, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're in here talking about NIL, and and. I'm going to let Bray talk about it, and I'm going to come back with my question a little bit. Will you, 
with the NIL, if you were playing today, I mean, what? Coach. How does that work? I mean, what, Coach, if I was playing today, I'll tell you what, I'd have every restaurant in Northwest Arkansas. I would be, I'd be at AQ Chicken. I'd be at JJ's Rides Barbecue. I mean, I'd be all over the place. And, and uh, I think it's a really cool opportunity for um, the guys to, to one, you know, they do put on a show that, that the whole country watches. And it's for them to be compensated for. And I think that is important. I know that the stories I've heard are a little bit crazy. Uh, when the with the NIL and and how um, it's changed the recruiting game and it's changed really the whole landscape of college football like you said with uh, with with coach Lashley and his team a whole new team in July and, and everybody transferring and moving around and you you have to recruit now high schools you got to recruit juco's you got to recruit um, transfer portal and you have to recruit your own hallways a little bit and so, and, and coach Pittman has talked about how, you know, the NIL can, could potentially create some animosity on some teams. Uh, you know, this kid's getting that. Why am, why am I not getting this? And I think it's just such a completely different game than it was when I played. And, uh, like I said, 10 years, 10 years ago now, but, uh, it, it has changed all of it. Well, and, and Brent, Brent gets hit up all the time for about the NIL money over here from Mar. <laughs> We're at the game. Marvin Gatz is he, – he's, he's out campaigning. Brent, what do you think about all of it? Well, I'm all for my, I'm all for Arkansas having all the NIL, mo- NIL money they have. I just, I just hope we spend it on the right people. <laughs> that's, 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 what, that's what I'm looking for. And, you know, that makes recruiting – so difficult, so difficult now because a lot of rec- a lot of, when you're recruiting, the first question that comes out of their mouths now is uh, how much money am I going to make? It's not am I going to have playing time? They could care le- they could care less about the playing time. They want the Benjamins in their pocket. And uh, coach, you you know this. You and I have uh, talked about it on many occasions on our phone calls. Recruiting has changed so much since you and my dad were assistant coaches because y'all were assistant coaches at the at the same times in college football. And the biggest thing my dad had to had to watch out. I couldn't I couldn't uh, bump him too many times. You know he wasn't ab- he wasn't above if he had a recruit driving through Wendy's and getting a double. Double Wendy's burger, then driving back through and getting, uh, getting the uh, French fries, and then driving back through and getting a drink, and then getting a frosty. He wasn't gonna get the combo all at once. He needed, he needed to see that dude about five times. <laughs> yeah. Well, coach, coach, let me throw this at you because we just got into it, and it's kind of a two part question. If you were, you know, say at University of Arkansas. How do you deal with NIL and the portal? And then let's go back and say you were at Murray State, you know, a lower division. How are they dealing with the portal? How are they dealing with uh, NIL? I mean, I've heard war stories about, I shouldn't be saying this, but I don't care, is, you know, people on campuses driving around, you know, trying to get a guy to maybe transfer, I mean, which is illegal, but we're not calling any names out, but that's going on. Uh how how would you handle that, you and your staff? Yeah, I want to go back. You know, when I was at the University of Arkansas, I never will forget asking Coach Ken Turner. I said, "What is this check for?" I got a check for like seven dollars and twenty five cents. So that's a laundry check. I said, "Really?" I was so excited about that laundry check. I go eat a burger, maybe use it for a movie or something. And I want players to get money. And I thought that's one of the things that we voted on back in the day was the cost of attendance. We, we were trying to get money. We didn't, we didn't get it passed back when I was coaching. But, you know, cost of attendance is, I don't know, could be five, six, seven thousand $7,000, depending on the school. And then sometimes a uh, young man, they qualify for Pell Grant. And, you know, now you, I understand where they get, they fly the parents in for the, for the game, for the bowl game or something like that. So, to me – it's probably a pretty good time to be a student athlete. But now when you add NIL, when you add NIL, let's say let's say I was at Arkansas. To me, you're going to have to get in it. You're going to have to embrace it because it's there, guys. And so to me, you got to go to, okay, we got to have a meeting. Let's, see. let's get Walmart. 
They're one of the best in the in the world. Let's get Walmart in a meeting. Let's get Tyson. Let's get uh, Warren Stevens. Let's get the Lindsay's. And let's get a few others. And let's get a group here. And let's get real. And you got to lay it out to your to your people. Like, guys, this is the game that we're in. And the game that we're in is it's going to take money. And what I would worry about is the locker room. Let's say, for example, I got Darren McFadden. Well, guess what? Darren McFadden, just like what Bray said, Darren McFadden's going to get every he'll get every Walmart commercial. He's going to get a car dealership. He's going to get this, going to get that. But here's the problem. Now, that, that Monday, that Monday after a game, I'm going to have a couple of meetings. One of them is see Peyton Hillis will be in there, um, Felix Jones, Sean Andrews. Hey, Coach, I'm blocking for Darren. Can I get a – you think I could do a, do something to get a you know a little bit of NIL money and Felix on down the line, you know? And so and I you would want them to have that, but that's what's difficult. Now they spend time worried about their deals, you're not catching as much, you're not lifting as much, you're not putting the thought in, hey, how are we gonna win this championship? I'm thinking about how I'm gonna get this Dairy Queen deal or something. I mean, it that's that's what's tough. Then you add the transfer portal to it. And it's a double whammy. So if you ask me what I would do if I was there, I would get a group of men that were wealthy in a room and say, guys, we're fixing to go get the best five to six guys on this side, on the offensive side. We're going to give you five or six on this side, but it's going to cost. And I don't know exactly what the price. I've heard the price now for a quarterback is up towards a million. Mm -hmm. I hear a price for the great running back between 750 and 1.2. I mean, I, I don't know, but we're going to make great decisions like Brent hit it. You got it. You better make sure the evaluation. We always try to do a great job of evaluating. You better make sure you're doing the right one because here's what happens. Hey, coach, we're, we paid you for the big time recruit. We got him the NIL deal, but he's on the bench. Coach, now what, what, what happens with him now? I mean, we want the guy that's starting for our company. We need that for us to invest. We want the guy. So you open up a can of worms that's never ending, you know. And so you got to embrace it the, the way the times are. Uh, it's it's they're asking, what's what do I get? I know I get the scholarship. I know I get all I want to eat. I know I get the tutors. I get room, board, and tuition. But what do I get now after that? So that's the big question. And so to me, the way the world is, you got to embrace this thing and get involved. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get left out. Well, if you're and, at Murray uh, State, you. you if you're at Murray State, do you go the same approach? You almost have to, don't you? Murray State, but it'd be at a lower scale, though, Jeff, because I don't have Walmart. I don't have the big boys. I've got just a few. I only have a few people that are that could handle giving, and so the number wouldn't be as high. But it would be the same deal. You know, it would be the same same situation. What I'd like to do is give everybody. I'd love to give everybody, hey, look, I'm going to give everybody, say, at Murray State, guys, I'm going to give each one of y'all all the scholarship $25,000. And if you do an NIL deal, hey, that's on your own. I'm giving you $25,000 on top of your room, board, and tuition, and let's get happy. So instead of my $7.25 laundry check, you get $25,000. Spread that out. Let's don't all go spend it on uh, spinner wheels and, and, you know, and jukeboxes all in one night. Let's 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 take care of our money. But to me, it'd be it'd be it seem like a little fair. But it's I don't. It's not a fair game, you know. Always because they know who's making money. I'm, I mean, KJ Jefferson. You know, I don't know. I don't have any inside information, but I bet he's one of the highest paid Razorbacks. I don't think there's any question. I mean, I heard a kid. Uh... The other day he's being recruited by an SEC school, three year nine hundred thousand, and he—I mean he's not even graduated high school yet, you know. And uh, wow. And in that part, talk to us. And, and all three of us talked about this: is the portal yeah. with your, you know, how do you deal? Do you, you know, obviously everybody's basically you're going to get almost a whole full staff to really be looking at that every day, uh, you know. What would you do for staff development in the portal, and how would you use the portal? Yeah, uh, I would have two to three coaches zeroed in on the portal on always what we need. 
you know, need whether we need a corner, we need a linebacker, we need a receiver, we need a quarterback, running back, whatever it is, we always have our antennas up. And who's in the portal? Somebody we got to know every single day. There's names. It's I, I saw a list the other day. It's unbelievable. It was over 1,200 people in the portal. It's just unbelievable. So you're doing research. You got to have research on those guys, and that won't be easy. And keep up with it. Here's the thing, too, though, Jeff. I've helped people transfer. When things don't work out, hey, look, I want them to go play. And so we, we've helped people transfer. The thing that I don't like is after the first scrimmage or after the first deal, you got to have a coach. If you get on one, the one of the first meetings in the staff room is, hey, listen, if you get on one, you make sure before that sun goes down, you're in that dorm room, you go eat supper with them. And you let that young man know you care about him. You're trying to make his life better and trying to make him the best football player. Otherwise, what you said, Jeff, somebody's going to come get him. They're going to call, hey, I didn't have a good day today. Coaches don't like me. Hey, so-and-so says he'll take you. I mean, you got that. Con- so not only are you looking at the portal, you're trying to keep your eggs in a basket. And you're trying to coach them hard. But yet, be careful. You better make sure that you go talk to them and have that relationship or they're going to leave. The one that blew my mind is I'm on the Chick-fil-A. Uh, we have a great event for charity. I'm on the first hole. Pat Narduzzi's in another car with Rick Neuheisel. I'm with Randy Edsel. And he says, guys, go ahead. I can't talk, right? I can't tee off. It's 9 a.m. May 1st. And after the, oh, you know, we said, well, we're waiting on him, waiting on him. Said, Y'all go ahead, go ahead. We go to, what happened, coach? Well, my best player, but letting the call for award winner. Jordan Addison. He won the Blitnikoff Award winner. He's at USC right now, and it's going to take a million dollars for me to get him back. What? He had a great year. He won the Blitnikoff Award winner, but now he's going to USC. So here he is in May trying to get, you know, the all the his affiliates and all his guys that can give money. Hey, come on, I need some help, I need some help. But he got outbidded by USC in, on, in May. And so, to me, that's what that's what makes it really, really difficult. And uh, I don't know. I, I just don't see how they, the horse is out of the barn now, man. You got to. Oh, you know that. Well, do, do, do yeah. you see? Do you see? It's a have have not deal. I mean, the people that have it, you know, are going to be successful. If you ain't got it, you're not. You know. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um, right. Unbelievable. Well, well, coach, we appreciate it. Hey. Always great to see you. Always great to see you. We'll have you on during the – we're getting middle football season. I, I think for the month of June, even the state of Arkansas, which you've heard about, you know, Buck James going to Conway and, and all that that deal. And There's just been a lot of football news happening, and, uh, and, and, and it's going to be a lot of fun. But, Coach, we appreciate you coming on and, and uh, look forward to seeing you this fall. You bet, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Coach.